it gets a little closer, just slowly lift your tip up. I see him. There's a fish back here, and and no other line. It's a good sign. He's a big fish. Look. Oh. Nice and easy. Oh. I'll lift your rod tip up a little bit. There you go. Come right over my head. Yep. Lean right, right over here to my left. There he is. Got him. That's a fatty. Very fat fish. Look at that. That's a beautiful trap. I'm Kel Kellogg, and my hybrid lead core system has brought lead core trolling back into the spotlight for trout and salmon anglers all over the country. If you'd like the world's best lead core trolling rod, get on over to fishhuntshoot.com and pick up one of my iconic bright yellow lead core rods today. You won't regret it because you'll be yelling, fish on tomorrow. Kel Kellogg here. When the trout bite is tough, when you're out trolling and you just can't get them to go on spoons or plugs or flies or even grubs, the one bait you can almost always count on to produce a few strikes is the dirty old worm, or more specifically, a dirty old night crawler. Um, and this is doubly important for me. I'm working as a fishing guide now. I've got to put my clients on fish. The weather's been variable, the barometer's been all over the map, the temperature's been dropping, you know, sometimes as much as three degrees overnight, and that puts the fish in a funk, and uh, I've had to resort to the dirty old worm to get those hits, and some of those strikes have come from very large fish. Um, last week, uh, for example, I'll put, the, I'll put the video up right here, we got a seven pounder on a threaded worm when the bite was really, really slow. Um, we got that fish, you know, mid-morning. Um, everything was kind of shut down. They weren't chasing. They weren't hitting spoons. But I got the worms in the water. I was able to produce several fish, including that beautiful seven-pounder. So, you know, everybody's pretty familiar with threading a worm and trolling it behind, say, a set of traditional flashers or cowbells or whatever. But the, I wanted to share with you a couple, maybe three, upper level worm fishing tips that are really gonna help you take your worm trolling you know, to the next level. And again, when the bite's tough, nothing produces trout like a, like a well-presented worm. So let me show you my first tip here. Here is one of my lead core rods. Um, you've seen me do this a million times in the kayak where I'll be trolling a worm and uh, you'll see a fish come up, let me grab the line here. You'll see a fish come up and and start you know, playing with the worm a little bit. Now, if you just keep trolling, sometimes those fish will, will end up committing and, uh, and you'll get them. But if they're really kind of off the bite and they're really not interested, but they're just picking at it a little bit, you've got to do something to make those trout commit. Now, when I'm in the kayak, it's very easy for me to get off the pedals and get on the pedals and with when I'm using the lead core line, it's very little stretch in that line, and I am able to, to you know directly affect the movement of the worm really quickly. Now in the power boat, you could try to do that with the motor, but it's difficult because that big boat's gliding along and you know you're trying to goose the throttle and get off the throttle. It's tough to do. But if you're using a rod that you, not, not a downrigger, but if you're using a rod, either a top line or a lead core rod, you could pull the rod out of the holder, you could drop that tip back towards the fish and give the fish a little bit of slack and then surge it forward. And, and you're feeling what's going on. You could see what the fish is doing. You could feel him. He's biting the worm. When he starts biting the worm and you feel like he's got it pretty good, you surge it forward. And if you, if you feel like you've hooked up, crank that reel and you got him. I caught several fish from my clients this last week doing that very thing. Um, just, just getting that rod out of the holder, using lead core line. Um, can't, again, can't do it out of a downrigger, but use that lead core line and uh, feed that fish a little line, make the worm surge forward a little bit. Just basically tease them into committing to getting that hook in their mouth. So that's one tip, and that's a, that's a really good tip. Um, 
we were heading in for lunch one day last week and uh, we had a few fish in the box but uh, we we're heading back across the lake and uh, ended up getting two fish back to back by manipulating the rod just like that and one of them was about two pounds nice fish so that that put a couple extra fish in the box and put a smile on my clients faces for sure um, now let's talk about standard worm rigging and uh, you've seen me do this a bunch of times on the channel but I'm gonna do it a, another time right here let me figure out where this lines going oh there it is right there I already, I already took it off my leader holder no wonder I couldn't find it so this is what I troll my worms on I advise you to do the same thing this is a slow death hook it's a must add slow death hook you can see that bend in the shank right there and I have that tied on an eight pound test fluorocarbon leader using a Pelomar knot. With a rig like this, I could troll worms naked. I could troll worms behind flashers. I could troll them behind a turbo flasher, or I could troll them behind a dodger. But this is how I rig a worm on a hook like this. Has some advantages, but there's also some challenges, and I'm gonna show you how to deal with the challenges here in the next tip. But let me show you how to rig a worm on one of these. Pretty simple stuff. Grab yourself a night crawler. Nobody wants to volunteer, imagine that. Here's a night crawler, it's like that. Take your worm, find the head end, that's your pointed end, not the flat end, and I like a worm that's about two inches long. In your tackle box, you should have both a worm threader and a standard threader. I'm gonna use the worm threader for this. Take your worm, I just break your worm in half, throw that throw that tail end portion away if you think it's going to be a red hot worm bite you can keep that in the box but the head end is definitely the end that you want to be trolling take your worm threader it's just a hollow metal tube on a handle take that broken end of the worm and insert that worm threader right about there and just take that worm right on right on to that threader just stay right in the middle of the body and you want to bring it out right through the tip of the head just like that take your slow death hook insert that hook into the hollow end of that tube just like that you can see it's in there now wrap that line so you can put a little tension on that leader you see I'm putting a little tension on there I got a little bend in that rod take your worm slide that worm right over the top right down the shank of the hook onto the line until the bend of the hook is out remove the hook from the threader and you have a perfectly threaded worm on a slow death hook you're going to be able to roll that by itself behind a dodger behind flashers whatever it's very important that when you're using this method that the worm rolls through the water and the bends in that slow death hook make that super simple pretty foolproof stuff now if a fish comes up and is nipping at that manipulate the rod like I showed you if you're in your kayak Use the pedals. If you're in a boat, pull the rod out of the holder carefully and give him some slack, surge it forward, just tease him a little bit and get him to commit and wham, you got that fish. So that's one way to do it. Another way to deal with nipping fish, if you got fish nipping at it and you want to troll in a downrigger or you can't get to the rod or whatever it is, this is where a standard style threader comes into play. This is a different setup. I've never showed this before on the channel. Now this, this is a worm threader. It's got the hollow tube. This is a, a more of a traditional threader. It's basically a needle. It's a baiting needle. This end you have a point, a pointy point right there. This end you have an eye. So you can put a piece of line through it. So let me show you what you're going to do with this. You're going to get yourself piece of, of eight pound fluorocarbon leader material and you are going to tip it with a number eight treble hook just like that. Let me show you what we're going to do with the worm and kind of imagine what's going to happen next. We're going to end up with a worm that has a treble hook coming out of the rear end. So let me grab another volunteer here. Don't all jump up at once guys. This method, I'll break the worm in two again. Just like that but instead of going in at the broken end I want my hook down at the broken end I'm gonna go in at the head end of the worm right here just like this I'm 
push that threader right through that worm's body, right on down, keep it right in the center. That was a frisky worm, so he's, uh, he's as, as, as you can imagine, he's not real happy. So he was trying to, trying to get away, but I got it. See, I got that threader going right through Mr. Worm. Now, what we're gonna do with this, is we're gonna take our leader, there's our treble hook, we're gonna go to the top end of the leader right here, and we're gonna put the leader through the hole in the bait needle. I guess I should show you guys. Right there, just like that. Now I got the line going through the needle, like so. Now, I am gonna kinda control the line over here. So there's what I got so far. There's the hook, there's the worm, there's the threader, there's the line going through the worm. I'm just gonna take this worm I'm gonna kind of work that in there like so, and I'm gonna pull. I'm gonna pull that leader material right on through that worm, just like that. Now once I get to this point, I need to get the rest of the leader out, and I'm not sure which end is hooked to the hook and which end is just hooked to the end of the line. There it is, right there. So I'm, I'm working it, I'm working it, I'm working it some more. There we go, I can get the needle off there now. Done with that, put that over there. Now, I've got the worm, you can see the hook. I'm gonna work that worm right down the leader, right to the eye of the treble. Yeah, your hands are gonna get dirty when you play with worms. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take, I'm gonna shove the shank of that treble into that worm's body. Guess what? I got a worm that's gonna roll through the water, but if they come nipping at this worm, they are gonna get hooked about 90, 95% of the time because I've rigged a worm with a treble hook in the end. It's gonna be going through the water going this way, just like this. It's gonna be rotating, and when they come in, take a little nip of that worm, they're gonna get a little nip of that laser sharp red treble hook right there, and uh, that fish is gonna get introduced to your smoker or your frying pan or whatever you're gonna introduce him to. He's gonna be on the end of your line. So. Those are my three big tips on how to fish worms. One, if you're getting a bite and you're using the standard slow death rigging, manipulate that worm, play with that fish, you know, speed it up, slow it down, make that fish commit. Number two, I showed you how to rig a worm on a slow death hook so it rotates perfectly through the water. You can team it with a dodger, flashers, troll it naked, whatever. Key speeds for worms, 1 to 1.8, you could take them up to 2, you could take them down to, you know, half a mile an hour. You can even drift with a worm on a slow death hook or a treble hook. Just let the wind push you. Very effective approach. Rig them on 8 pound fluorocarbon, that's a good balance between light and heavy. If you use 10 or 12, worm's not going to rotate as well. You don't need to use 4, that's kind of overkill, that's kind of stacking the odds against yourself. Um, and finally, if you think you're going to be fishing out of a downrigger or you know you're just seeing those fish nipping and you're missing them, consider having a standard bait needle in your boat. You should always have one. Thread that line through the worm and have that worm trailing a number eight treble hook and uh, the nipping's going to be over, the hooking's going to begin, and you're going to have a big smile on your face. So when the going gets tough, you're going to get dirty. Break out those dirty worms and get to work. You won't regret it. I'm Cal Kellogg. I'm signing off. Thanks for all the support you've been giving the channel. And if you're looking for gear, including my, my trademark lead core rods, which are absolutely deadly. I caught fish this week on them that weighed 8 pounds, 7 pounds, a couple over 24 inches. Just absolutely incredible. Go on over to Fish Hunt Shoot. Dot com and uh, we will hook you up with the gear you need to yell fish on baby um, I'm out of here for now I will catch you later right here on YouTube you guys have a wonderful day and thanks for all the support I'm Kel Kellogg